In the afternoon, I decided to visit a local piercing studio to find a new nose stud. The studio was a modest-sized building with a spacious lobby. As I entered, I noticed a mother and daughter waiting while I began exploring the jewelry displayed in the cases. The staff at the studio was incredibly friendly, and one of the employees kindly assisted me by showcasing various jewelry options and providing information about prices. Just then, two women entered with a young child. One of the women inquired about the location of the restroom and took the child with her. The other woman started engaging the mother and daughter in conversation, asking about the piercings they were interested in and discussing prices. She momentarily interrupted the staff member who was helping me, but since I was still browsing, it didn't bother me much. The woman then inquired about getting a piercing on her buttocks. The staff member seemed puzzled and asked for clarification. The woman expressed her desire to have either the top of her rectum, her butt crack, or one of her butt cheeks pierced. The staff member, realizing they didn't offer piercings in that particular area, politely informed her. Undeterred, the woman questioned the staff member's qualifications and credentials, suggesting that she shouldn't be working there if she lacked the necessary training. She further inquired about the cost of other piercings, such as septum, lip, and tongue piercings. The staff member explained that the prices varied depending on the type of jewelry chosen and attempted to showcase some options from the display case. Despite the staff member's efforts, the woman persisted in asking for specific pricing. Finally, the staff member handed her a catalog of jewelry and requested that she have a seat while they continued assisting me. Meanwhile, the other woman and her young son exited the bathroom, informed the woman that they would wait in the car, and left. Throughout the encounter, the woman had been acting erratically, displaying behaviors like loudly complaining, pacing, and kicking at chairs. The manager, having heard the commotion, emerged from one of the closed rooms and approached the woman, offering his assistance. The staff member explained the situation to the manager, stating that the woman now wished to have a septum piercing. The manager informed her that there was a waiting list and she would need to sign in, but she grew angry, demanding to have the piercing done within the next 15 minutes. Recognizing her urgency, the manager suggested that if she registered immediately, he might be able to accommodate her within 15 to 20 minutes. The woman mentioned the specific earrings she wanted, and the manager informed her that they would cost $120. Baffled, the woman stared blankly at him and said, I only have $40. Perplexed, the manager reiterated that the price was indeed $120. Frustrated, the woman erupted into a tirade, expressing her disbelief at the exorbitant cost and adamant refusal to pay more than $40. In an attempt to find a solution, the manager pointed out some less expensive earrings, priced at $30 each. This momentarily calmed the woman, but her temper flared up again when he mentioned that her total would amount to $50. The manager patiently explained that the piercing itself carried a $20 service fee. Without uttering a word, the woman calmly turns and opens one of the closed doors where another staff member is attending to a piercing. Perplexed, he begins to question her actions, but she insists that he pierces her immediately, claiming that the manager was attempting to rip her off. In response, he promptly closes and locks the door, causing her to lose her composure. She erupts into a fit of yelling, crying, and waving two $20 bills in the air. All of us, including the staff, the mother and the daughter waiting, are left dumbfounded, observing this grown woman throwing a tantrum. Eventually, she abruptly stops, turns around, and exits the building as if nothing had occurred. In a state of disbelief, we exchange nervous laughter and discuss the peculiar incident. However, our conversation is interrupted when the doors swing open once again, revealing none other than the same woman. She stands there, remarkably composed, and calmly declares, Hello! I'm here to get a tattoo. The manager looks at her, astonished, and firmly informs her that they do not offer tattoo services, requesting that she leave as she has been disturbing other customers. In response, she begins to scream, accusing them of hiding the truth about their tattoo services due to her financial limitations of only having $40. She claims they discriminate against people of limited means and insists on receiving a tattoo or piercing immediately, emphasizing that they should not refuse service based on someone's ability to pay. 
With a display of anger, she tosses a stack of magazines off a table and storms out. Once again, we exchange incredulous glances, struggling to comprehend the bizarre series of events. I eventually purchase a couple of earrings and leave a generous tip for the bewildered staff, who continue to wear expressions of utter bewilderment. As I head towards my car and begin opening the door, someone calls out, and to my surprise, it's the same woman approaching me. She asks if I have one hundred dollars, but I choose not to engage and simply shake my head while attempting to get into my car. Shockingly, she grabs my arm and accuses me of being rich and greedy for not helping a woman in need, pointing out that I had been shopping at the piercing studio. In response, I hold up my pepper spray and sternly warn her that I will use it if she touches me again. I further inform her that if she doesn't leave within the next ten seconds, I will call the police. She lets out a shriek and hastily retreats to her car, fuming with anger. And so, that concludes the remarkable sequence of events. While not as outrageous as some stories out there, it was my first encounter with a Karen, and after years of reading similar anecdotes, I felt a certain excitement to contribute to the collective experiences. On an anonymous account, just in case the lady in question happens to stumble upon it, enjoy your evening and keep an eye out for Karens, everyone. I'm a 23-year-old woman currently residing in a household with my younger siblings, all of whom are under 10 years old. Whenever my mom decides she can't handle looking after them and doesn't want to bother my older sibling, the responsibility falls on me to take care of them. Sometimes this duty stretches from the moment they wake up at 7.30 in the morning to when the youngest finally stops their monkey-like antics at midnight. While such long days are now infrequent, it's primarily because my siblings have become slightly more self-sufficient and I have a full-time job on my plate. At one point, I was juggling four six online college courses as well. Although I was allowed to bring my art tablet switch or school computer downstairs to use while supervising the little ones, it was nearly impossible to accomplish anything significant. They always seemed to get hungry at different times, constantly needed to be separated from furniture or each other, and occasionally found themselves in desperate need of using the bathroom, requiring me to carry them to avoid any accidents. Not only did I have no time for myself— especially when I was temporarily jobless and had no valid reason to avoid taking care of them, but my academic performance began to suffer. Considering the considerable amount of money I was personally contributing to my education alongside relying on loans, this situation was incredibly frustrating. To make matters worse, I have been entirely overlooked by my parents now. They can't find the time to assist me with financial aid information, which has resulted in me being unable to secure any loans for school or any other forms of support. Unfortunately, I can't afford to continue my education, even though I've started to form a vague idea of what I might want to pursue in life. One small but significant detail I feel compelled to mention although it may not drive the narrative as much as the rest, is that I suspect I may have ADHD. While I don't exhibit a complete list of symptoms, I do find myself rocking or tapping shaking when I'm stressed. I've even unintentionally damaged my teeth from grinding them excessively. Eating sounds, children's screams, or sudden loud noises, like when they jump off furniture, trigger intense discomfort and anger within me. Occasionally, I find myself lost in my own thoughts for a few moments without realizing I've mentally drifted away, only to be snapped back to reality when I discover a tiny human attempting to scale the refrigerator as if it were Mount Everest. Given all these circumstances, I strongly feel that I shouldn't be responsible for children, especially since my mild annoyance in their presence has the potential to escalate to near hatred. Even encountering unrelated children in random social settings tends to provoke irritation and disgust within me, even when they are behaving perfectly fine. Currently, the only instance of children that doesn't bother me is babies. They're small, misshapen humans that just exist, and when they're not screaming incessantly, I can somewhat appreciate their simplicity. However, the thought of conceiving one myself feels like an impossible scenario. Unfortunately, my family despises this aspect of me. The child didn't do anything to you. True, but 
this particular child doesn't have to. They're simply irritating to me. But you were a child once. Thanks for the reminder. But that doesn't change how I feel now. We took care of you, just like that, when you were that age and had to clean your little butt. I didn't ask you to do that, so let's leave my past butt-related matters out of this discussion. But in our religion, it says that you have to... You seem to forget that infertile people exist. So, you're going to deny your parents the chance at grandchildren? Yes, pretty much. You have plenty of other children who can provide you with grandchildren. Your emotions don't matter now. You'll change your mind when you're older. Your body will remind you, Sure, but the excruciating pains and frequent vomiting that I experience almost every month don't exactly instill confidence. I could potentially face life-threatening risks. God will protect you. And if you die, it'll just be part of his plan. Okay, cool. I'm not willing to risk my life for a child I already know I won't enjoy having. In addition to these arguments, the fact remains that I don't even have a significant other yet. Furthermore, although I may never disclose this to them, I'm fairly certain that I'm bisexual, with a stronger inclination towards women on certain days. Any child I may have would either not be biologically mine or would face the risk of being shunned and mistreated by my family for potentially having two mothers or worse, both issues combined. It's all incredibly frustrating. I don't like kids, and I have no desire to have them. It's partially their fault for not properly raising their youngest and instead burdening me with the responsibility. Can we please move on to a new argument? If you've made it to the end, whether you've read through it or just scrolled, I sincerely appreciate your attention. There are times when my family says or does things that I simply can't move on from, and this overused argument about babies and childcare, when they barely fulfill the latter themselves, is just tiresome. Ooh, boy, do I have a good one. I'm set to inherit a good portion of land, as is my EB. The two properties are approximately the same size and have the same valuation. EM decided that it would be beneficial to everyone to go ahead and give us the properties so we could buy a home or whatever in order to get around inheritance taxes and probate when she eventually passes. Well, I decided to list mine with a real estate agent in September of last year. Trusting my mother to do the right thing, I didn't ask her to go ahead and deed everything over. I just asked her to sign the paperwork and I was going to handle everything else. Here's what happened. My EB lives in jail. Not literally, but he's there enough that all the detention officers know him well. He can't leave the house without being charged with a felony, all of which are valid charges. C. He's an unrepentant H&FA hole and does not care about anything else. There's a long list of all the truly screwed-up things he's done, none of which I feel like rehashing, but rest assured that all of the charges are born of a fatal combination of arrogance and stupidity. EM continues to support, enable, him. To her, my children are just the same in my eyes. We're not, to clarify. Well, after we listed the property, he got in trouble again for what feels like the 457th time. What does she do because sweet baby boy can't possibly spend more time in jail? She signs a bond with the county because what bail bondsman would touch him? None. That's how many. Using all of her properties, including what's supposed to go to me and her own personal home. She never told me any of this, so here I go, be bopping into what looks like a good future, never knowing that I'm engaging in criminal activity, thinking that I'm going to buy my own house. The land sold. We're under contract with the buyer. My family is working on what we assume to be our new house. She even helped clean it out all the while, knowing all of this. Closing time comes. The lawyer runs a title check one more time, and what does he find? The bond. 